Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. This is Don Wilson. And smokers, there's no doubt about it, Lucky's taste better. And this better taste starts with Lucky's fine tobacco. Yes, L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco in a cigarette that's made better to taste cleaner, fresher, smoother. Cleaner? You bet. In a Lucky, you have a perfect cylinder of fine, clean tobacco, free from those annoying loose ends that get in your mouth and spoil the taste. Fresher? Of course. Luckies are fully packed. Without air spaces, hot spots that burn too fast, taste hot, harsh, and dry. And every pack of Luckies is extra tightly sealed to keep in Luckies' fresher taste. And smoother? Yes, indeed. Luckies' long strands of fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco are made into a cigarette that draws freely and smokes smoothly. So, friends, enjoy a better-tasting cigarette. A cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke. Be happy. Go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take you back to yesterday, about a half hour before rehearsal time. Jack and I had gone into the corner drugstore to get a bite to eat. Hmm, there are a lot of people in here, Don. I hope we can find seats. Yeah, every table's taken. Yeah. Oh, Jack, there are two empty stools at the end of the counter. Uh, You take those, Don. I'll wait. Oh, there's some people getting up from that table over there. Let's sit over there. Okay. Oh, Don, Don, look. Three people were at this table, and they ate for only 35 cents. That's the tip. (laughs) In a drugstore? Must be murder in Romanoff. Oh, well, what are you going to eat, Don? Oh, I don't know. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Dennis. Oh, so Don, join us, Dennis. Oh, thanks. Uh, by the way, kid, what did your parents think of our opening program last Sunday? Oh, I don't know. They're still out of town. <laughs> out of town? Yeah, when I got back here from England, there was no one home, just a note from my mother. A note? Yeah, it said, Dear Dennis, receive your letter telling us that you are coming home, so your father and I decided to take a short vacation. <laughs> don't forget to vote in November. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> 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 Gee, I don't know what to eat. Hey, what are you fellas ordering? Nothing yet. Yeah, the service here is so slow. Yeah, it? Jack, they changed all their help here this summer. That blonde over there is the new waitress. Oh. Oh, the blonde, eh? Hey, she's cute. Oh, miss. Miss. What do you want, Mac? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. We'd, uh, we'd like to order. Okay, what do you want? Well, don't you have a menu? It's written up on that blackboard behind the counter. Oh. <laughs> well, I can't see that far. With those glasses, I thought you could see Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'll have a lettuce and tomato sandwich and, uh... A glass of milk. <laughs> How did you know? I can spot them every time. (laughs) Hmm. What are you going to have, Dennis? Well, let's see. Oh, Miss, do you have any ice cream? Yeah. Pistachio ice cream? Yeah. Good, I'll have some chicken pot pie a la mode. (laughs) (laughs) What? Dennis. Dennis, why in the world would you order ice cream on chicken pot pie? I like cold chicken. Well, miss, I know what you're thinking But if he wants it, give it to him Okay, now what about you, Faso? (laughs) Well, 
Forget about a diet. I'll just have a glass of tomato juice and some rye crisp. Just rye crisp? About 10 pounds. <laughs> and this, we're in a hurry. Okay. You know, uh, hey, fellas, you know, she may sound a little hard, but there's something attractive about her. I don't know whether it's her blonde hair or that blue tattooing. <laughs> You know, she is. She is good-looking, though. If you think she's good-looking, you ought to see her sister. <laughs> oh, is she, is she good-looking, too? No. <laughs> well, then why did you whistle? Your daughter is showing. <laughs> now, then, stop being silly. Here's your sandwich, Mac. Look, miss. Miss, my name isn't Mac. It's Jack. Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yes, I'm on the radio. Oh. Television, too, you know. Uh-huh. I do my first TV show on October 5th. That's uh, two weeks from now. The world is waiting. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Now, let's eat, fellas, or we'll be late for rehearsal. Oh, Mr. Benny, would you like to hear the song I'm going to sing on the program Sunday? In here? Sure, why not? Dennis, this isn't a studio. This is a place of business. So what? Last night you played your violin in a gas station on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> That's different. It was their opening. Fine agent I've got. I thought he was booking me into Texas. It was Texaco. <laughs> anyway, I don't want you singing in a drugstore. Well, if I sing now, I won't have to take up the time at All my... right. If you want to make a spectacle of yourself, go ahead. Okay. Glad I got out of that drugstore. So embarrassing sitting there when Dennis started to sing. Oh, darn it, I left before the check came. <laughs> it always happens to me. I haven't had dessert in years. <laughs> Here's CBS. When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. Will hello, you? Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Harry. Any messages? Yeah, Bob Crosby's looking for you. Oh, thanks. Hey, he's your new orchestra leader, ain't he? Yes, he's taking Phil Harris's place on my radio program. Oh, yeah. Hey, he's gonna be on your television show, too, ain't he? Uh-huh. Hey, your first TV show is October the 5th, ain't it? Yes, yes. That's two weeks from now. The world is waiting. <laughs> well, see you later, Harry. When you Jack. say I beg your... Jack! Oh, hello, Bob! <laughs> the, uh, the doorman, the doorman told me you were looking for me. What is it, Bob? Well, Jack, I'm, I'm kind of new on the show, and I don't like to complain, but... Well, I just read the script, and... Well, do your writers know that I'm your new orchestra leader? 
I mean, do they they know about the change? Well, what do you mean? Well, they got a gag in here where you say to me, hey, when you leave the orchestra, why don't you hold a baton in your hand? Uh-huh. And I'm supposed to say, what, and put down my martini? <laughs> Well, Bob, Bob, that's a funny joke. Well, maybe so, but that's not my character. That doesn't fit me. I don't drink. You don't? <laughs> no. Well, couldn't you start? <laughs> my, my writers have thousands of drunk jokes. <laughs> But anyway, Bob, I'll tell him to watch it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Say, by the way, Jack, uh, I wonder, who do I see about getting some tickets to the broadcast? Tonight? Oh, my producer will take care of you. Well, that's swell. See, I need a couple, because today is my kid Stevie's sixth birthday. I promised him he could come to broadcast. Oh, oh, Stevie's sixth birthday, eh? I bet he's excited. Oh, huh? is he? You're not kidding. Should have seen the presents he got. Mother gave him a bicycle. Brother Larry gave him some roller skates. Everett gave him a football. And Brother Bing gave him a bank to save his money in. A well, uh, uh, piggy bank? No, the Security First National. <laughs> God, giving away a bank? I knew, I knew Bing was loaded, but I, yeah, I didn't think he had that much. He's comfortable. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this summer, he heard that you have an underground vault where you keep your money. So he decided to dig one in his own backyard. Boy, what a mess. Well, what happened? He struck oil. <laughs> oil? No kidding. Yep. Last night, he opened a gas station on Ventura Boulevard. Had a violinist and everything. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Bob. I happen to know that place. It's a Texaco station. Well, who do you think owns Texaco? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's funny having a brother that... Uh... Say, what's that? Oh, it sounds like Mary. Let's go in her dressing room and see what's so funny. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Bob. Hi, Jack. Hello, Mary. What are you laughing at? I was reading this letter I just got from my mother. Oh, she gets them all the time, Bob. Huh? So your folks live in Plainfield, don't they, Mary? Yes, they have a farm there. Uh, read the letter, Mary. Go ahead. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> My darling daughter, Mary, just a short note to tell you I'm glad the summer's almost over, as it was the hottest one we've had in years. It's been plenty hot here, too. Tell Jack that his first program last Sunday came on the air just as I was going out to milk the cows. So I took a portable radio in the barn to listen to it. The milk must have been transcribed, too, as they didn't release it until a later hour. <laughs> have you had enough, Bob? <laughs> no, I want to hear some more. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. Things have been about the same at home, except that your cousin Sophie is visiting us. And I'm sorry to report that she's still an old maid. We did introduce her to a nice fellow when we thought it would work out. But he must have been a Republican because he took one look at her and said, it's time for a change. <laughs> that cousin of Sophie yours hands me a laugh. Speaking of politics, we had our local primary here last week to elect a new mayor and your Uncle Julius lost again. Hmm, this is the eighth time he's lost. Hmm. We thought he had a better chance this time because nobody was running against him. <laughs> How can that be? Rather than elect him, they abolish the author. <laughs> How do you like that? Now look, kids, we better get on stage for rehearsal. Oh, Don! Don, is everybody ready? Yeah, Jack. Dennis, come on, we're going to rehearse. Oh, Jack, Jack, before we start, there's a gentleman here who's been waiting for you. He wants to talk to you. Well, Don, I'm busy now. Can't we make It'll it... It'll only so take a minute, Mr. Benny. Well, all right. What can I do for you? I'm here to do a story about your personal appearance trip in Europe this summer. Oh, it was nothing. That's what I told my editor, but he sent me in. <laughs> hmm. 
I understand that Miss Livingston was with you on this trip, too. Yes, and Dennis Day also. He appeared with me at the Palladium Theater. In London? Right out, Governor. Dennis. <laughs> now, uh, where'd you go, Mr. Benny, after you left London? Well, after leaving London, we went to Dublin, Ireland. And was Dennis Day there with you? Sure, and we got it. was good to get me feet back on the old spot. <laughs> Dennis, please. Now, um, after leaving Dublin, where'd you go? To Glasgow. Glasgow, Scotland? Sure, and be God, it was good to get me feet back on the old spot. <laughs> he stayed in Ireland. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, there's been so much publicity about your appearance in London, perhaps we could get a new angle if you told me about your trip to Scotland. I'll be glad to. <laughs> well, as soon, as soon as we arrived in Glasgow, we went right to the Central Hotel. I've got everything unpacked and hung up. Good, Rochester. You know, I'm glad I have a couple of days off before I open at the theater. Are you going to change your act now that you're in, Gla in Scotland? A little. I'll make it more topical. You know, localize it. You know, the people in Scotland are noted for their thriftiness, so I'll, I'll probably do a lot of jokes about being stingy. That's always funny, don't you think? Don't you? Don't rush me, boss. I have to phrase this very carefully. <laughs> Well, I gotta go out pretty soon. I'm going shopping. Okay, boss. Do you want to wear your brown suit or the blue? Uh, neither one. I'm gonna wear kilts. Kilts? Yes, kilts. But, boss, they'll drive you crazy. Why? The pocketbook's on the outside. <laughs> I don't care where it is. Anyway, I'm gonna wear them sometime before I leave Scotland. Now, Rochester, have you got the, uh, the address of the store where Miss Livingston said she'd meet me? Yes, boss, it's the Bonnie Heather department store. I wrote it down when she phoned. I've got it on me. Rochester. What's that? The good humor man. <laughs> it is not. Let me take a look. Rochester, look, it's a whole band. And they're stopping right under my window. Maybe they came to welcome you to Glasgow. Say, I'll bet that's it. We welcome Jack Benny, Jack Benny, the thrifty man for brother. No other can sing like Benny can. We love you, Jack Benny, your eyes are so very blue, they're blue as the heather, as close together too. They tell us a love, he is free on the draw, and we've heard that it's free of all loosens. Well, if they are so free, then it's lucky strike for me, and the funny, funny pop on a lucky. You know, Lucky Strike is the smoke we all like Cause a Lucky is round and it's firmer A Lucky is made of that fine and light effect For a funny, funny smoke like a Lucky No loyal Scotman anywhere will ever dare and then compare He likes his Lucky's better taste, he thinks they're much too good to waste The lads and lads, he's all agreed, for them it's tell us in the A clean, a fresh, a smooth, a smoke, the favorite of the Scotty Goodbye, Chuck Benny. We hope you enjoy your stay, and good luck, Chuck Benny. We must be on our way. Now, Rochester, wasn't that a nice thing for them to do? Thank you, boys. Thanks very, very much. You know, Rochester, Scotland is such a friendly country. Imagine sending a band here to answer the phone, would you please? Yes, sir. Mr. Benny's room, star of stage, screen, radio, television, and would do the Highland Fling if he hadn't already flung it. <laughs> Rochester. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Livingston. He's just ready to leave. I'll tell him. Boss, Miss Livingston is waiting at the department store. Say, I better get going. I want to buy some gifts. Now, where's that store Miss Livingston said she'd meet me? It's on the corner of Fifth and Fairfield, near the first or fourth. Hmm. I better write that down. 
4th and Fairfield near the Firth of Fifth. No, no, no. Not 4th and Fairfield. It's Fifth. Oh. Well, what's on 4th? I don't even know who's on 1st. <laughs> Well, I'll find it. Goodbye, Abbott. So long, Costello. <laughs> Goodbye. Now, let's see. The Bonnie Heather department store should be around here someplace. Maybe it's that store across the street. See what the sign says. No, that's Manny Moe and McGregor. <laughs> I wish I could find a cop or someone who knows his way around. Oh, oh, there's a man standing on the corner in plaid kilts and tam o -shander. He ought to know. Oh, excuse me, sir, but is the Bonnie Heather department store around here? I don't know. <laughs> well, we are. We are near the Firth of Fourth, aren't we? I don't know. <laughs> Well, this is Fifth Street, isn't it? I didn't know. <laughs> you're, you're not even a Scotchman. Why are you wearing those kilts? It's Ladies' Day at the ball game. <laughs> oh, well. I'll find the store. It ought to be around. Oh, Jack, Jack. Oh, Mary, I was looking for you. Where's the store? Right here. How do you like that? I was standing right next to it. Well, come on, let's go in. Oh, actually, get something nice for my sister Florence. Well, they have some beautiful gifts in here. Hey, this is a nice store. Yeah, you ought to be able to get something very nice in here for your sister. How much do you want to spend? Oh, I ought to get her something better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think she'd like any of these perfumes? Well, you can't go wrong on perfume. Oh, here comes the man. Oh, yes. Oh, pardon me. Are you the clerk? Aye. May I be of service to you? Yes, yes. This is quite a nice broad brick moonlit <laughs> store you've got here to me. <laughs> yeah. For heaven's sake. What's the matter? In England, you are dropping your H's, and here you're spraying people. <laughs> I'm just trying to be one of the boys. Now, clerk, I'd like to buy some perfume for my sister. Well, uh, would you like something sophisticated or alluring? Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, how old is your sister? Well, she's two years younger than I am. Eh? Uh, and how old are you? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine? Yes. That one almost started his motor. <laughs> Please. Say, this looks this looks like a nice bottle of perfume. It's such a, an, an unusual box, too. Oh, clerk, how much is this one in American money? Uh, eight dollars. Hmm. Eight dollars. Right. That's not so bad. Tell you what, clerk, I'll give you four. <laughs> I'll take seven ninety. Hmm. I'll give you four ten. Seven seventy five. Four dollars and eighty cents. <laughs> Seven ten. I'll give you five. Have a chair. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, uh, where were we? Seven ten. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'll give you five. I'll uh, take seven. Five seventy. Six twenty. Five ninety. Six dollars. Six ten. Five eighty. Back up, you passed each other. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll tell you what, clerk. Let's make it six dollars even. Ah, uh, you're a gentleman and a scholar. It's a deal, sir. Thank you. I'll unlock the store and let you out. Good. <laughs> Good. Ladies and gentlemen, here's information of importance for every citizen. This is going to be the biggest, the most important election in years. 
If you're an eligible voter, naturally, you'll be at the polls on November 4th. But you can't vote unless you're registered. If by any chance you don't know when, where, or how to register, your city hall or county courthouse will be glad to tell you. Don't miss the boat. Register now so you can vote on Election Day. Remember, you have to register to vote. Thank you. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, you'll find Lucky's taste better, taste cleaner, fresher, smoother, because Lucky Strike gives you fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in a cigarette that's made better to taste better. Lucky's taste cleaner, because Lucky's perfect cylinder of fine, clean tobacco is free from those annoying loose ends that get in your mouth and spoil the taste. Lucky's taste fresher, because they're fully packed without air spaces, hot spots that burn too fast, taste hot, harsh, and dry. And every pack of Lucky's is extra tightly sealed to keep in that fresher taste. Lucky's taste smoother, because in a Lucky you get long strands of fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in a cigarette that draws freely and smokes smoothly. Yes, friends, Lucky's taste better. It's all for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment. For a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke, be happy, go Lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Here's your perfume, sir, and it's all wrapped up nice and pretty. Uh, thank you, Clark. Uh, uh, lad, don't go yet. What? You've proved yourself to be a true Scot, and I'd like to present you with these kilts. Kilts? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Come on, Mary. Are we going back to the hotel? No, to the ball game. Come on. <laughs> The program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balder, John Packerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Mark. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> Thank you.